the Black Country Museum, they're edging towards the day when the beam engine can be fired up once again. Guy is back to help repair the brick wall that insulates the boiler. Got a bit of a problem with the brickwork around here. Well, this is the brickwork around the boiler. The hot gases come from the furnace and they go up into a flue and right the way around the boiler. Yeah. And then up the chimney here. But we did have a rather big crack here. So we've taken out the bricks. We're back to good stuff now. Yeah. But what we need is some more bricks. But we've got to have the right sort of size bricks and also yeah. we've got to match the colour. So you want to get the clay right and get the firing right. So it's not as easy as it sounds. No, easy said than done, I think. Guy needs traditionally made bricks. So he's visiting brickworks in York where they still use some 18th century production methods. There's still a demand for traditional bricks from conservation and specialist building projects. First, the brick makers mix clay, sand and water. This mixture is then thrown into moulds. Mark Todd is the main moulder here. The biggest parts here, they're doing 1500 a day. 1500 a day, that's some going nothing, is it? You just size the hands on the man. Hey, I won't ask that with him. Definitely not. I'll watch you again. So you're going for that sort of shape there. Right, I'll aim for that. Okay. <laughs> it looks really easy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it, that's not bad. Right, so as I, as I take that off you, you then need to start picking up the next one. I need oh, to be a bit quicker. Yeah, 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 you need to be really fast. Back in the Industrial Revolution, they were starting at eight year old. Eight year old, you know, they'd be all right, they'd be a labourer at eight year old. And obviously, when they were passing the clay off the conveyor belt and putting it down and, and shaping it, you know, they'd, they'd be learning off what the, the brick moulder was doing. Now, I've got this one. <laughs> I'm honest, you see that? We'll get all nape in the bottom of a mould. Trick, <laughs> yeah. During the Industrial Revolution, brickmaking became one of Britain's great industries, and hand moulding was just the beginning. Never before had there been such a building boom, and brick was the basic unit of this new world. All right, that's it, then just turn it straight over. As demand reached staggering levels, mass production took over. By 1895, the London Brickworks produced 25 million bricks solely for the construction of the railways. Should we scrap that one? Yeah, let's scrap that one. <laughs> that thing's hit. That's it. And it took a few goals to get that sort of... Well, no, I don't know if it actually master it. It took a few goals to do it something like, you know, but then pulling it off and you couldn't rush it in this. But it's all right, me doing... I maybe one or two half-decent bricks out of a dozen. There was only one or two that you could maybe put me near to. And it took me a thick end of an hour to do that. We're getting a fair heap on there, bro. <laughs> Building a bit of a wall between them, no. <laughs> <laughs> Once moulded, bricks have to be fired before they can be used. No, you don't like it. Things here. Things here. In the 1700s, the method of firing bricks hadn't changed since the Middle Ages. It happened in a makeshift kiln called a clamp. So what, what, what exactly are we doing then? We're going to replicate the way that they made bricks. In the 18th century. 18th century. Yeah. Yeah. No one at the company has ever made a clamp, but master brickmaker Steve Bitham is going to try. When it comes to brickmaking, Steve is the man. He knows the ins and outs of brickmaking. Steve and Guy stack up some finished bricks to form the clamp. We've got, you know, a few bricks, loose bricks, mix them together. That's how I build in a bit of a, kind of a mini furnace, really. Guy's wet, moulded bricks are stacked into the clamp. Coal slag is tipped in between the rows. This will help the fire reach at least a thousand degrees. We need to get these up to a certain temperature to mature the clay so it's hard enough to perform its job of, you know, building houses. And if you didn't reach the desired temperature, these bricks would fail. An average industrial clamp would have contained anything between 30 and 40,000 bricks, sometimes even more. You know, back in the 1800s, there was back in a million bricks. Yeah, yeah. A million bricks in one go. In one go. Back in a million bricks in one go. Yeah. Trying to seal the cracks. Once the clamp is sealed with clay, a fire is started to bake the bricks slowly inside. 
There is still moisture in there, which you need to get rid of slowly with the heat from the yeah, very slow. If you don't, you end up the bricks will just blow. What's that then? What's that? Is that the bricks? I think that's. I think that's the bricks exploding. Yeah. Well, that, even that there. Yeah. That, that's that's the moisture that's still in the brick. Bang. Expanding. Yeah. That's it. The livelihood of brickmakers depended on how well they could build the clamp. What are we doing, Gary? Hot. Very, very hot. Weight had to be kept to a minimum. A failure rate of more than one in five bricks could lose the brickmaker his job. Hopefully, Guy will have enough for the beam engine. of the new common beam engine. I look like it. I'm not watching my brick layer, to be honest. Yeah. No, if you tell me, I'm sure I can go in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jeff's the man. Jeff's the man. No, he is, that's the saying, isn't it? Jack of all trades, master of none, but I think he's jack of all trades, master of all, right? It'd be good to put a half brick there, and then an extended half there. Right. With the final brick in place, the team are ready at last to put their work to the test by finally bringing this titan of the industrial age back to life. 